So hi, this is Julian at power for uk Here at power for uk we've been developing our capability to reverse engineer products and help develop new ones. We're doing this by using a combination of 3D scanning, and you can see the scanner set up today. Um, also using CAD, and then finally turning the 3D files that we, pr we produce into physical parts by using our very high-tech 3D printing machine. What this does is this allows us to check part quality, dimensional accuracy and part fitment before we commit to manufacture. So in this video we're going to demonstrate our 3D scanning capability. So today we're going to use this part as an example. This is a cast alloy lever finisher used in the Range Rover L322. Um, this is basically a part that is prone to high wear and can begin to look a little bit shabby over the years. So what we're going to do here is reverse engineer this part so that it could be manufactured to a good quality and then this can be used to smarten up your interior. So we've sprayed the part in grey primer basically to reduce reflection and any glare which can sometimes cause issues with the scanner. So this part is being placed on the scanning turntable and then using the scanner software, we can set the turntable to rotate at a specified number of degrees. One complete cycle of scan will move the part through 360 degrees. Okay, so the scanner is now scanning the part. What it's basically doing is taking a series of digital photos every time the turntable stops. Each scan photo basically creates thousands of points to represent the surfaces that it's seeing. So we've basically set this part up so it's scanning every 10 degrees to enable us to capture most of the surfaces visible. So you can see on the screen there the geometry of the part is slowly being captured through each scan and once this cycle is complete we will check the scan and if required, the part will be repositioned and we will repeat the process again until we've captured all the surfaces. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut to showing you a completed scan and what that looks like and show you how to put a mesh over it. Right, so you can now see the completed scan on the screen. Uh, we had to run this um, using four scan cycles to make sure that we captured all the surfaces, particularly all of the undercuts. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to put a, uh, a mesh over the point data. So that uh, mesh will be turned into an SDL file and that file we can then use to either uh, send directly to our 3D printer and get a physical part made so that we can check for quality and uh, part accuracy. Uh, we could take it into CAD and do any modifications, um, smooth out any blemishes, or we could simply send it straight to a supplier for uh, cost quotation. So you can see here I'm going to select mesh model. I'm going to go for a watertight model as we've got both the, uh, the A surface and the B surface and we're going to go for low detail on this example um, just to save a bit of time. Uh, if we went for a medium or a high detail the processing time would uh, be that much more. So whilst the, uh, the software is uh, processing that um, I can tell you a little bit more about why the 3D scanning and printing side of things is so interesting and useful as a, as a business tool to us here at Power for UK. It uh, basically gives us the ability to very quickly reverse engineer parts and try them out before committing to high cost tooling. And it also allows us to create data which can be manufactured straight into 3D printing. And what I can show you here is a, uh, the 3D printed part of this actual part. This was done on a, um, a home 3D printer. Uh, this was the first scan that we took of this part and 
This is basically the, um, the, the piece that it fits into. So we can now check it for dimensional accuracy and part fitment. And as you can see there, it, uh, it looks pretty good. Just push down here, clicks into place. And uh, that's not a bad first effort. So, software's now completed uh, processing the data. Uh, it's now asking me for a simplification ratio. So you can see here we've got a, a, an SDL file size of uh, 31 meg. Uh, if we want to reduce that down to a, a smaller file size, particularly if we're going to email this out to a supplier, then we can apply a, um, a simplification ratio. So if we go 50%, you can see it's half the, the SDL file size. Um, we've just got smooth and sharpen selected here just to sort of smooth out um, any imperfections and sharpen any features. Hit apply. The software is now computing the mesh to put over the, the cloud points. And any second now, we should see the, the finished part. And there it is. So, uh, if I spin it around, zoom it up so you can see it slightly more clearly. And you can see there, it's pretty much captured everything that we wanted to on that part. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching the, the video. Uh, we're going to make another video showing, showing you a demonstration of the 3D printing machine. But until then, thank you for watching.